always just did whatever I wanted. Because I was young and I didn't care. You're gonna have to promise me something. What? That you won't call the cops. Um, hello. Miss Carlisle? Mrs. Ben Saunders, gardener extraordinaire. Ready to get started. Hey, Ben. Something I can do for you, Mrs. Carla? Thank you. You know how you could, like, really, really thank me? Mind if I jump in the pool? Are you a swimmer? I never really get the chance, but I'm pretty good at most physical stuff. She's a little out of your league, don't you think? Here's some advice. All things in this world are divided into groups. Do not mix your groups. Look, I don't have anything. And I see your house and your car. You have all these beautiful things and they aren't being taken care of. You have no idea what it means to a guy like me to take a dip in a private pool. It's all a game. The whole world. I'd like to report an illegal alien in my neighborhood. Only suckers choose not to play it. You like her. You want her. You want me to cut her so she bleeds all over? She makes no difference to me. Say my welcome. Maybe you should go. Do you want me to? Hi, uh, my name is Alec Toombs. I am here with Chad Harbold, the uh, writer-director of Private Property, which releases this Friday the 13th in select theaters and on VOD. Uh, the movie stars Ashley Benson, Shiloh Fernandez, Logan Miller, Jay Farrow, and Frank Whaley. Uh, thank you for joining me today, Chad. Of course. Thanks, Alec. Um, my first question, uh, this is the second film you've made with Shiloh Fernandez after 2016's Long Nights, Short Mornings. Uh, what is it about him that appeals to you as a collaborator? And likewise, what is it about you that appeals to him, you think? Um, yeah, uh, well, Shiloh and I became very close making uh, our last movie together. Um, uh, like you mentioned, long, called Long Nights, Short Mornings. Um, and we, I think he likes me because I challenge him and push him and, uh, and uh, he, he likes, and he, I think he likes the sort of cinematic context that I put him in uh, often, like between the two movies, even though they're both, you know, different in a lot of ways, but they do have similarities and are playing on sort of um tropes in his uh in his kind of on-screen persona um and i think he is interested in that um and uh for me like you know i i grew up with this sort of you know i love a i love a movie star and uh i think that like this is a particularly private property and with Ashley as well is a movie that is is supposed to star um people that have a certain look to them mm -hmm. and um and I think that Shiloh for me as a sort of like um you know as a starting place as like you know he, here is a handsome and charming guy and like I like starting there and then ruining that, or kind of turning it on its head a little bit. Yeah, he yeah. Kind of feel a little bit like um, an actor from like the fifties or sixties in this to me, uh, which I agree. Cool. Yeah, 
Um, and okay. you know, I, I I'm not sure if you if uh, you know the film is a remake from the fifty from you know the the late fifties. It was released in 1960, but I'm sure it was shot a few years earlier. But I mean, that's that's kind of the impetus of making it was I saw the original and Corey Allen plays um, the the part that Shiloh plays uh, called Duke. And uh, he was, you know, James Dean's rival in Rebel Without a Cause. So he's like in a similar vein of like that kind of like, you know, uh, hipster, greaser, sort of like bad boy that like, you know, has depth to him or whatever. And like when I saw the movie, I was like, oh, like Shiloh would slot into that uh, role. And then that kind of got my brain going. It's funny you brought that movie up. It kind of correlates to my next question. Um, what is it about Leslie Stevenson's film that spoke to you so deeply that you felt the need to remake? Yeah, I mean, I you know, to me, it's like I saw it. Uh, I wasn't looking to remake anything, but I, you know, I was looking. I was trying to brainstorm ideas for a sort of self-contained thriller, um, which is always sort of you know, uh, like uh, you could write an entire history of, it, of independent film based on the, you know, self-contained thriller or horror movie. Um, so it's always a kind of good thing to have on you um, when you're like uh, pitching people and things like that. So, um, uh, but in terms of like action, so I, you know, saw the movie uh, and was sort of uh, very taken with it. And it's like, um, to me, it's like the right kind of movie to remake in that like, I, it's not a masterpiece, but it's like, it's like an excellent, interesting movie with lots of um, great things in it. And I wouldn't even say it's like particularly flawed or like, you know, it's not like the other example of that is something like Ocean's Eleven or whatever, which like doesn't really hang together as a movie in the original, you know, like, um, where this certainly does, but like, you know, clearly it, it was an independent film. It's, you know, it, it's, it's a product of its time a little bit in, in some ways. And like, I think some of the, you know, it was controversial upon release, but now feels sort of, you know, tame and kind of its sexuality. So, but the things that it's like exploring and hinting at, like are really interesting with regard to the character dynamics and their desires and, you know, how those clash and complicate and change throughout the film. And so like, those were things that I was really holding on to. I mean, like you have, you know, Catherine, who's the, you know, lonely housewife who is unfulfilled in her marriage and uh, meets this sort of rough around the edges uh, guy from outside of her social sphere, who's the first person that actually, in a long time that actually like, seems to be interested in her and her interior life and um but you know he's a little bit dangerous and he kind of keeps pushing her boundaries over and over again but she kind of can't help but succumb and then on the other side of it you have duke who is you know a drifter and a criminal and um and you know is essentially scheming to you know seduce and manipulate and assault her um, who can't help but sort of fall for his own um, act sure. and uh, finds himself kind of pretending to genuinely care about her so much that he eventually kind of does. And like the, the complication of that, um, those things were just very interesting to me. Cool. Um, I'm a fan of the actor uh, Logan Miller, whether he's playing a good guy as in the Escape Room movies or uh, the antagonist like he did in Love, Simon. Uh, this is a very different role for him. What was it in Miller's skill set that made you think he'd be a good fit for this role? Yeah, Logan's great, isn't he? He kind of, like, steals the movie a little bit. And, like, um, I had seen him in um, a Sundance indie called Take Me to the River, um, which he's really good in, and um, which is a very kind of um, interesting and complicated movie. And then, um, yeah, like the escape room movies are great, man. Like, I think those are really underrated. I saw both of them in theaters. Like, they're really fun. They're kind of like our generation's uh, final destination. And um, uh, so I really, I was, a, I knew of Logan and I was a fan. He was somebody that was on my radar. 
And like, so that was the, the, that part was the hardest to cast because there were just a lot of different um, kind of ways you could go about it in terms of creating the dynamic um, between the two guys. You know, he's like this, the, his sidekick who's like kind of crazier than him. Right. So like, you know, we, we kind of talked about like, is it, is it like a, a mice and men thing where the, where the guys like the sidekick's kind of like a big brute, but like, and, and isn't really emotionally mature and like, you know, um, or is he kind of like an older sort of like schlubby guy that's just kind of like a loser that follows this guy around. And then we kind of settled on this sort of like, you know, skater kid, little brother, you know, psycho school shooter kind of vibe for this, for this guy when we were started talking about Logan and um, Shiloh was the one that brought him up and gave him the script. And um, he, uh, he immediately got it and took to it and like, and, you know, Shiloh's also known Logan since he was a kid. So like that dynamic was like pretty easy but it was tricky because we needed to find we needed to find somebody that we you that we bought that Shiloh would could bully and boss around and that he would listen to him and follow him and be afraid of him, but then also can sell the turn at the end when he like has a knife to her throat, you know, and for that to feel genuinely dangerous. So it's a really difficult part. And uh, I, you know, Logan, I think did excellent work in it. I agree. Um Thanks. Frank, yeah. <laughs> Frank Whaley does uh, wonders with uh, little screen time in this film. Uh, do you have a favorite performance of his outside of Private Property? Well, I mean, God, like Frank Whaley is a legend and like I was so grateful to work with him. And like we were hoping for somebody, you know, that's the type, you know, it's a two day part. He's in like 10 minutes of the movie. It's a nice, you know, I wouldn't call it a cameo. He kind of gets to like own like 10 minutes of the movie, which is really great. And like, I, of course, wanted somebody like that, you know, um, in that role. And that's, you know, a role that you get a million kind of pitches on. And I just was like, I just wanted to be somebody cool. I just wanted to be somebody cool. And like, you know, somebody that's like, has been in great movies and like all this stuff. I mean, like, you know, obviously you go to like Pulp Fiction, which like, you know, he's in one of the most, you know, legendary single scenes of all time essentially um you know and it's him and Travolta and Samuel L. Jackson and that's it uh in that scene basically and so he's like incredible in that um and you know that's a completely unforgettable um performance and scene um and then you know of course I love you know one of his uh leading roles uh swimming with sharks which you know like I as a as a kid in Ohio who knew no one that worked in the film industry, like watched that movie a ton and was like, is this what it's really like? And uh, I mean, it, the answer is yes and no kind of, uh, but you know, he's, he's amazing. Also like such a pro, incredibly easy to work with, totally got it. Like, um, and, and was wonderful. I mean, the other, there's still a few of his that I need to catch up on that I haven't seen, like, in, like a Midnight Clear and career opportunities, which I think are, like, bigger roles for him. But, like, you know, he's just, he's just a legend. And, like, he's, 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 was, was really great to work with. Um, and, uh, you know, so I, I feel really lucky that I uh, got to uh, spend some time with him. And he's also, like, was very generous with stories with, like, you know, all of the, you know, amazing movies that he's been in. Super cool. Um, oh, I, the uh, other one I'll shout out, shout out is his, uh, as, him as fake, uh, one of the fake Oswalds in JFK. Uh, is so great at the shooting range. Uh, so good. Just a great smarmy performance. I noticed you're a member of the uh, social media platform Letterboxd. Uh, what drew you to the app and has it yielded any professional advantages or rewards to you? Oh man, that's funny. Uh, I love Letterboxd. Um, I've like, uh, I've, it's, I, it, I don't think it's gotten me any professional opportunities, uh, other, but it has like expanded my, you know, knowledge of film and like sort of encouraged me, you know, I'm already a cinephile and, you know, I watch, uh, you know, maybe like, I mean, I should look at my Letterboxd, but you know, something like 500 movies a year. And, uh, 
and I, you know, I'm a also like kind of obsessive, like logger and all this stuff. And I was sort of like, you know, doing that, some of that stuff on my own until I could kind of have it all in one place in, in a, in a great way. And like, um, and you know, it's so satisfying to like log a movie that it like feels like it encourages you to watch more stuff. And like, you know, honestly, like I've learned more about and like discovered more kind of obscure um, films from like following certain people um, whose tastes I admire, like on that app. Like at this point, like I trust like the people I follow on Letterboxd ratings more than like Rotten Tomatoes or Metacritic. Sure. Well, I'm getting a cue. Um, Chad, I really appreciate your time. I've been Alec Toombs with the Filmy App out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Again, Private Property is your movie. It'll be coming out uh, this Friday the 13th uh, in select theaters and on VOD. I thank you for your time. Thank you, Alec. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Thanks. You too.